Welcome back to Who Chose. We've investigated ancient gardening techniques in the past. We've looked at oyers, and I've also investigated ways that you can slow down water on your property so that you have a reservoir of water for native plants and animals to populate your property. Today we'll be investigating another ancient gardening practice, hugel culture. Hugel culture literally translates to mound culture, and it's an ancient technique where using decaying biomass, you can create a more fertile soil to plant into. Behind me, you'll see raised garden beds, which I actually created before the inception of my channel. And I'm going to walk you through how, by using Hugel culture, I've actually been able to extend the productive time that I'm able to use my garden beds throughout the year. So before we created the dam to slow down water on our property, our only water source was our tank, which we use for everything from drinking water to showers, to hydroponics, to brewing. So I didn't really have much water left over to water the garden. So it restricted our growing months from March through to September, November, purely because we didn't have the water to water the plants. And where we live in southeast Queensland gets extremely dried and hot during the summer months with temperatures getting up to about 45 degrees Celsius. This means that during the summer, which we're just coming out of now, I have to rest the garden beds and stop planting just because the summer months absolutely decimate the plants. This is one of the reasons why I was using oyers as a watering technique, just because we have such a scarcity of water. What I've found is that in these situations, my raised garden beds are much more productive. They give me an extra month either end of the growing period and that's because i used hugel culture in the creation of these garden beds now traditionally in hugel culture a mound similar to a swale is created where large logs are placed along the center of the mound facing north and south which allows the plants growing on the mound the full rotation of the sun on these logs, you then place smaller logs, then smaller sticks, then smaller debris until you reach leaf and mulch-like debris. And then you cover the top of the mound with topsoil. So first thing I did to create these beds was I made the frame. The frame is actually made from recycled shed panels, which are riveted together with aluminum angle on the corners. Once I had them in place, I then filled them with large cut up logs. Now, ideally, the older the logs, the better. However, the logs I used were freshly cut. If the logs are older, they'll be more biologically productive than if they're younger. However, they will age over time. So if it's what you've got to use, just use it. I then placed larger sticks and logs over the top of those and got gradually finer and finer up until the point I laid palm fronds over the top that I had available but you could just use leaf litter then over the top of that I put a nice rich topsoil which I actually had delivered from the local landscaping mob I then covered the beds in a mulch and let them sit through a couple of rains so that they'd settle. And after they had settled, I then planted into them. The main benefit I've seen with these raised beds is that I've had to water them so much less. If I get a moisture meter and I stick it into the raised beds versus the garden beds that I've had laid on the ground, 
it always stays consistently moist in the raised garden beds. And I put this down to the fact that the wood in the garden beds and the biomass in the garden beds holds so much more water than the topsoil laid over cardboard and clay that I made the lower beds out of. Now, it's not all sunshine and lollipops. The nature of the bed means that there's going to be gaps throughout the, the garden bed. And over time, as you see here, the garden bed settles down into those gaps. And also, you can have ant and termite problems as well as rodent problems. As I'll show you, there are some rodents living within these beds. For that reason, I wouldn't recommend having these beds placed against the exterior wall of a building or near any structure that you don't want these pests to be nearby. There's also the cost saving factor. To fill raised garden beds this size requires a bulk amount of earth. And if you fill it with sub-quality earth, the plant's roots are going to travel down into that sub-quality earth and produce sub-quality produce. So this method allows the use of waste garden biomass as a way of future-proofing your raised garden beds so that once the biomass has naturally decomposed, it will then provide more nutritional value for your plants, which will in turn provide you with more nutritional value. So there you have it. Hugo culture. It's the way to go with raised garden beds. If you like this video, Give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Who chose?